Well, guys, welcome back to Decoding Babylon. And today I got a special guest. I got Josh Monday on from the Josh Monday podcast. Josh Monday Christian and Conspiracy podcast. No problem. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, the Christian and Conspiracy podcast. <laughs> and um, obviously, that's my favorite kind of Christian, the kind who's into uh, conspiracies and has a podcast. Yes. Because that's basically who I am. So. Well, welcome to the show, Thank Josh. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, so what we do is we take a conspiracy, show you how it relates to the Bible, just like JT. Big shout out to Fittest Flat Earther that hooked us up. I'm, our show is pretty much based mm -hmm. just like yours is, and uh, it's just me and my brother, and we just uh, crush it, and we always have a guest on every week, and we have uh, about 174 episodes out now. Um, we're on YouTube at Josh Monday Music and Podcast, okay, because uh, I'm actually a Christian rapper, too. I, I have uh, Christian rap music on there, and... Um, also, Army veteran as well, devoted husband, father, and uh, yeah, we just do our thing, man. And uh, Flat Earth came up uh, about my fifth episode, and I just, from then on, I just dug really deep into the moon landing, Flat Earth, NASA, and I kind of connected everything to the Bible. And from then, I wrote a sermon, and I've been on probably 30 or 40 shows, man, uh, doing this sermon and just adding to it, getting deeper and more detail to it. Oh, nice. So, um, yeah. So how did you even get to have a podcast? I mean, I think that's where a lot of people like I know that I kind of went the social media, like, you know, you make start making little videos and eventually like people saying, hey, we kind of like your videos. Do you have a podcast? And then eventually you, you just make one. Yeah. Um, so how did you did you go? Or did you do like TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff first? Or did I you did do, music did you first. I did a Christian uh, song called Signs of Things to Come. It was a Christian and conspiracy based song. Uh, during the, you know, 2021, uh, you know, when all that stuff was going on and uh, podcasters were asking me to be on the show, hopped on Dangerous World Podcast and Legit Bat Podcast. Those are the two first ones I did. And then uh, Mark Stevens or Mark Steves, uh, My Family Thinks I'm Crazy Podcast. And, uh, okay. and then, uh, uh, Legit Bat Podcast was like, hey, dude, uh, the, the show that you did is getting a lot of views. You, you should start a podcast, man. People like you. I'm like, all right. So I got my brother, and uh, we just started doing it, man. <laughs> that was it. Well, that's good. Praise, well, praise God. So obviously, you're well into it then. So what, you said 170? Yeah, 174. I think would be the next one, yeah. It's 173 shows. So, did, so when you went, like, so obviously, if we're, if we're going to talk biblical cosmology today, I mean, how long did it take you to get to that? Were you resistant to that idea? Because I think that, if I'm being honest, when I first started to, people people start suggesting that the earth was flat. I was like, yeah, as a guy, I've been, you know, I'm a college educated guy. I've got a degree and everything. And I've, and I, I guess I've gone the more, I wouldn't say worldly route, but I've been a Christian. And it's like, so when I've got into the conspiracy space, like that was already kind of a line thing. Oh, flat earthers. And so like, even if you had any kind of conspiracy, it was always like, I bet you, I bet you think the earth's flat too. So I was really resistant for a while until it was presented in a way that was, you know, like what the, here's what the Bible says. You claim to believe it. Here's what the Bible says. And then it, eventually it got, it got undeniable that what the Bible said. And I was already kind of, yes, I was already kind of in on the moon landing stuff as, as hokey. Yeah. And I didn't believe in that, but, but I was still like, that was, that was a bridge too far for me until I, I basically, I got pushed into the corner of like, well, do you believe the Bible or not? Yeah, and then that's exactly, that's me too. Uh, I believe the Bible. I think we should filter science through the Bible and anything that doesn't match up is, it, you know, that's mentioned anything that doesn't match up. We should, we should just definitely go with the Bible. You know, when it comes to salvation, mm -hmm. someone brings you a different salvation that's in the Bible. That's demonic. If someone brings you a different creation that's in the Bible. That's also demonic. People don't understand that. You know, they think that, um, they could play, place 30% uh, of the Bible in an allegorical poetic section that doesn't go along with what they've been indoctrinated with. And then they'll go with the 70% of the Bible that they're good with. But what happened with me is I just uh, I, I just did a show on uh, Flat Earth from a biblical perspective. And after that, it grew, man. God planted the seed and then it grew. I had Dave Weiss on. I've had so many different Flat Earthers on that are not Christian as well, just to see their perspective uh -huh. and find out the scientific portion of it. And then uh, I've had people on, you know, with round tables and a whole bunch of different people that come on my show that um, that go with uh, the Christian perspective, you know. So once I found out and the Bible lines up with it, then that's what it is, man. I'm like, just like Paul, you're there 100, 150 percent or nothing. It's up to, you know, that's that's how I am. So I'm 150 percent in on this. So, what, yeah, so that's I guess that's the thing. It's like for me. Even for a while, once I was really starting to question things, I, 
I was still a bit, a bit resistant to say, you know, like I still don't even like calling myself a flat earther. I just, I think it, I think it's, I think it kind of minimizes what, what I believe. Cause I think that it, if biblical cosmology, that, that is, I think that's, yeah, I think that, yeah, I believe in this is a whole different realm than, than this described by the science. Yeah. And so I, when I see like the flat disc in outer space or the flat pizza box, I think that's why they just call flat earther because, because people want it to be like that archaic looking idiotic, yes, you know, exactly model exactly. that, that makes no sense. Oh, well, it's just flat and it's just everything else is around planet, but, but we're, fl and it's like, no, 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 no. There's heavens. And then there's the earth. It's nothing like you see that diagram looks silly. Am I allowed to share um, screen? Is that cool? Yeah, 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 one hundred percent. Okay, let's yeah, so let's I, uh, let's share screen real quick, and then uh, I'll. Uh, can you guys see this? Okay, yeah. perfect. Oh, yeah. Okay, so faith cometh by hearing the word of God, right? So, so uh, Romans ten seventeen says, so when faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we know that faith cometh by hearing. Uh, what kind of faith is being produced if you hear the word of God yet do not believe it, right? Um, also, mm -hmm. uh, it's impossible to please God without faith, right? So. Um, so it's definitely important to uh, to understand that, and as well as uh, the devil's going to attack your faith because he knows we're saved by grace through faith. Um, I don't believe this is a salvation issue, but I do believe it's an issue if you don't believe the Bible, right? So I, I think we got to definitely yeah. build faith by hearing the Word of God. So uh, all this stuff that you're going to hear biblically, you guys got to understand is uh, is it's all scripture and it's not it's not interpretation. Uh, per se it's basically word for word what the bible says and then we go back to the strong's concordance and find out if it, if we're teaching it correctly um also all scriptures inspired by god that's uh second timothy three sixteen, and is profitable for doctrine for reproof and for, for correction all right so now you guys know that uh all scriptures is, uh, is given by inspiration of god uh titus 1 2 says god cannot lie uh uh and then also uh, hebrews says that it's impossible for god to lie so we got to understand that. Um, also, uh, the the book of Genesis, how reliable is the book of Genesis? Well, understand that in Numbers 12, verses 4 through 8, uh, the Lord speaks to Aaron and Miriam and says, I speak to prophets in dreams and in visions. But when I speak to Moses, I speak to him face to face. Uh, yeah. Mouth to mm -hmm. mouth is what the uh, uh, the King James says. The face to face is what the New King James says. And if you look up that in the Strong's Concordance, it actually means he speak, spoke to him face to face, right? So I think that's interesting. Um, that that yeah. validates Ezekiel. That validates Isaiah. That validates all of the prophets because that's what God says. He comes to them. So what are what are these visions given from uh, to Ezekiel, to Isaiah, and to all the prophets? It's given directly from the Most High. And, I, and, and the reason why he's called the most high is because he's actually at the highest point of creation here. But um, so it validates all that. So we got to understand that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I also like to kind of go over what scientists say first and compare it to what the Bible says. Right. So yeah. scientists say that the earth is at twenty three point four degree axis uh, spinning at one thousand and fourteen miles an hour at the equator and orbiting the sun at sixty six thousand six hundred miles per hour. We got to understand this, okay, because um, that is just totally inverted and opposite of what the Bible says. We'll go over it. Um, we got to understand that the fastest bullet travels at 2,600 feet per second, which is 1,800 miles per hour, right? So the fastest bullet goes 1,800 miles an hour. So we are to believe that we're orbiting the sun faster than a uh, 30 times faster than a bullet. You guys got to understand that. Right. Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? Um, so we have that. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, also, uh, the uh, the moon orbits us at 2,288 miles per hour is what they say, allegedly. So that's actually faster than a bullet as well, right? So we have that going. Yeah. And then uh, while the universe uh, moves uh, – oh, actually, while the sun moves through space at 525,000 miles an hour and we're actually chasing the sun, okay? So we have that movement as well. All these different movements happening all at one time, and uh, it's just – it's crazy. Um, also, what they tell you, I think, I think, I think that's the thing. I think that was one of the things that really kind of got me was that then yet we have the Maseroth. We have like the, the stars and the constellations that are fixed or just or just move around Polaris. And that to me, that was like one of the biggest ones where I'm like, wait a minute. When actually I saw the, the spinning ball model, like done in animation, I'm like, this could not 
you could not see the same stars every night if it was like this. Yes. The stars would look like streaks across the sky, and obviously Polaris would move. Yes. But but they don't, and they haven't moved for thousands and thousands of years. They remain the same. And obviously that's when, like, so in Genesis one fourteen, when God says, did he put the the sun, the moon, and the stars, or the lights in the, in the ferment for signs? Yes. For, for seasons, for days, and for years. To light up the that's earth. What, that's, that's what it means. That's what yeah. it means that, that, that I think that you can, ch- you can tell what season you're in based on where the sun is and where the constellations yes. are. Because that's, 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 what it, that's what that means. So if that spinning ball model was true, then, then those other things would not work. Yes. And, and they also – so this is what's interesting too. They, they try to tell us that the closest star – is 4.4 light years away. The reason why they tell us in light years, because people don't take that extra step and find out what a light year actually is. A light year is actually 6 trillion miles. So you have to take 6 trillion and times it by 4.4, and you get 24 trillion miles away, the closest star. Some of the some of the stars are a million light years away. I mean, all these crazy numbers, right? So, um, and another thing we got to understand about science is they say that the closest galaxy... Is 2.5 million light years away. I can't do the math on that. We don't have a calculator big enough. So all these gigantic numbers and crazy numbers. And uh, when I go, when I tell you what the Bible says, it's going to be polar opposite, and it, and everything is going to be a lot closer, way closer. So it's like I said, it's an inverted model from what science says. Um, and then uh, so there's a scientific trinity that they have out. <clears throat> I call it the scientific trinity. First thing is going to be the Big Bang theory. Um, George Lamontre uh, came out with that. He's a Belgian Catholic priest, cosmologist, Jesuit trained. Okay, so we have that uh, where they basically they say 13.6 or 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang happened. 13.6 billion Mm -hmm. years ago, the stars were formed. Uh, 4.6 billion years ago, the sun was formed. Uh, 4.5 billion years ago, the earth was formed. So that's going to be totally inverted as well from what the Bible says as, as, as I go through it. Keep that in mind when I when I go over Genesis, okay? The second mm. one of the tr- scientific trinity is going to be evolution. Uh, evolution came from uh, Charles Darwin. Uh, his great-grandfather was actually – or his grandfather was actually a 33-degree mason. That's where all this information came from. And instead of passing it to his son, who was a preacher, he passed it to Charles Darwin, which is his grandson. And his grandson ran with it and, and wrote a book and, and – Today we have evolution. The, the third, I believe, in the scientific trinity is going to be the heliocentric model, uh, Copernicus. You know, uh, He was also a known occultist, <clears throat> and uh, he has a Freemason lodge named after him. It's CHP 246, right? So that's the three. Helios is actually a sun god, so you guys know. So when you say we have mm-hmm. a heliocentric model, that is sun god-centric model, okay? Understand that. In Greek, that's a Greek sun god, right? So... Every mm-hmm. time you say heliocentric, you're basically saying we have a sun god centered uh, 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 solar system, right? And um, right. and even Copernicus himself was talking about the sun is enthroned in a temple, beautifully set, and, and everything has to revolve around it. The sun brings light. The sun brings life. Acting like the sun is actually like God. So we got to understand that, right. right? So there we go. We have that for the scientific part. Um, now, as uh, man, as JC, as as you or JT, sorry, JT, as you know, everything that you go through, man, is is so amazing, bro. And it's just it's it's really exposing this type of stuff where you're talking about like uh, you know sun god and all this different stuff. I, I kind of seen some of your shows and and how you're exposing the enemy of, about this type of stuff, man. And it's it's always been like that, you guys. You understand that mm-hmm. uh, Babylon, uh, uh, Egypt, uh, Greek. Uh, Rome, all of them have been worshiping the stars and worshiping the heavens. And in the Bible, in the very in Deuteronomy, it even says to not do that. You know, it talks about uh, right. And even um, even I think that uh, we did a show with a friend, and I and I believe that that the Big Bang actually came from like the Kabbalah. Yeah, there is. A, have you ever heard? Have you heard yeah, that? Yeah. Where it was like that the, that they have a creation store account in in, in the Kabbalah. It's like there was a creator that created basically one atom or I don't even know what one particle of something. Yeah. And that thing was what expanded out. So it's like that the the sign the origins of things cannot be science because there's no way to observe or to test those things. Amen. So, true, so you have to understand that the origin had an origin too. The origin story had an origin. So where did they get it from? And again, like so if we have 
if we have sacred text, which would be considered the Bible, they have sacred text that's that's not the Bible. And so that that's why I said that when you when you put when you put the, when you put the science over what your Bible says, you've actually put a text higher than your own scripture. Yes. And then so obviously, like, who do you trust in that sense? Amen, bro. Exactly. And people will attack evolution all day and no one has a problem with it. People will attack psychology, like saying that it's demons or demonic. People will attack archaeology and say that, you know, hey, we're 6,600 years old. We're not, uh, you know, billions of billions of years. People don't get that offended. But as soon as we tell you that the cosmology is different and that the earth is this way compared to what the science says, Christians and everybody alike starts attacking and thinking, you know, going crazy on you. So let's, let's find out now what the Bible says. Okay. The Bible says on day one in Genesis, in the beginning, uh, it says God Elohim created the Shemaim and the Eret, which is the earth. It says the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So we got the face of the deep down here. Uh, it, 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 uh, and then it says that, you know, let God said, let there be light separated the light from the darkness before the sun even happened. He says this day mm -hmm. two, God created the firmament. Uh, now he separated the waters from the waters. And, and he says that, um, the separating the waters from the waters, the water is going to be, there's going to be waters above. And then, uh, there's, there was waters that he had to separate. So he actually created the firmament and, uh, he actually calls the firmament heaven. The word firmament actually is rakia, right? So if you go to H seven five four nine, rakia, it, it says this is what it says on the biblical usage: extended surface, solid, expanse, firmament. And then when they go into detail, it says expanse, flat as base support, supporting what? Well, it's supporting the waters above, right? And it even says that. Um, a firmament is a vault of heaven supporting waters above, considered by Hebrews as solid supporting waters above, right? So the firmament is solid, right? It's not called the softament. It's called the firmament for a reason, right? It's actually <laughs> solid, right? So we're going to go over in detail that. Um, and if you go into uh, the CJB Bible, they actually call it a dome instead of calling it a firmament. So understand that CJB, they're, they're real good at keeping the Hebrew solid, right? So um, day three, God created the oceans, right? The seas, uh, the dry land and the vegetation. So those continents are actually formed, which are going to be down here. Um, day four, that's when he created the moon, sun, and the stars. Also the greater light to rule the day, which is the sun, the lesser light to rule the night, which is the moon and the stars. Also understand that he doesn't mention planets. Understand that the stars and the sun are two different things here. Not the sun and stars being the same, like science says. Also, the order is different. The order in science is going to be that they created the stars first, uh, then he, then the and then the sun, and then the earth. Here, the earth was created first, and then he placed the moon, sun, and the stars in the firmament, guys. Which is like me mm -hmm. standing in the room. They're in the firmament. They're actually inside, not not literally in. I don't believe some people do, but I believe that they're in the firmament. They move in the firmament, right? So. We have that. Um, now, we got to understand that that would place a fixed and a movable earth with the sun and the moon moving in uh, inside the firmament, right? So any questions on anything I've gone over so far, brother? No, I just wanted to say, actually, it's funny. I did a video. I don't know if you, if you ever saw this one, but I, I was reading the Bible straight through again at the beginning of the beginning of the year. Of course, I started off with Genesis. And that's when I was just like, I, I, I fully accepted the biblical cosmology at that point. And I basically made a video and I kind of just threw down the game. But I said that if you believe Genesis 1 is a literal account of creation, you cannot believe, you can't intellectually, honestly say you believe the science and this at the same time. Yes. If you believe it's literal. I mean, I guess I said some people, they don't want to say it, they believe it's an allegory, but then they, they, they're forced to because, again, that's what I said. If you believe that our days are established by the sun, you're the earth spinning around the sun. Well, yeah, the sun wasn't created until day four. Yes. So there was three days and nights. There was sun, there was light and night, you know, there was light and darkness three days before God even created the sun. So I said that you have to understand these are opposed. There's no outer space because there's waters above. Yeah. There's a heaven. So you know, there's no space outside of the firmament. And, and, and it's funny because like a lot of people accepted that, but a lot of people they don't know that they don't believe Genesis one until you actually put it in that kind of way where you're saying like, 
this is different than this. Which one? Like, who do you believe? Yeah, they don't even think about and, it, bro, because they've been. It's so no, because I think they've been they've been allowed to believe. Yeah, like you said, they're allowed to believe what the spinning ball model is because they don't think that contradicts the Bible. But they can't. They don't believe in evolution because they know that yeah. does. They know they know they don't believe in all that kind of stuff like that, the Big Bang and evolution. But they think that the spinning ball model fits into the Bible, but it doesn't. Yeah. Th- and that's the one that's 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 been a lie from um, the enemy. Yes, bro. And it's inverted, like I said, man. And the, the devil's not going to come in and he, you know, they say he's the god of this world, right? He's not going to come and give you this cosmology, obviously. Why is he going to give you the biblical cosmology? What he's going to do is take God's cosmology, put it in a blender, and serve it to the public, and then everybody's mm-hmm. going to be believing that, not knowing. So that when, by the time you get out of college and you read the Bible and you're like, this is totally opposing the science, which is supposedly fact, but they're all theory instead so people don't know that but so we have uh here's what we have also how do i know that the earth is fixed and immovable we have zechariah 1 11 and they answered the angel of the lord and stood among the myrtle trees and said we have walked to and fro through the earth and behold all the earth sitteth still and is at rest first chronicles sixteen thirty. he has fixed the earth firm and immovable uh psalms 93 1 thou has fixed the earth immovable and firm psalms 96 10 he has fixed the earth firm and immovable psalms 104 5 you have laid the foundations of the earth so it shall not be moved forever, right? These are the foundations of the earth down here, and this is the earth, right? So um, he also says in Isaiah 45, 10, he who, er, uh, he who made the earth and fashioned it himself and fixed it fast, right? So very interesting stuff. So we have a fixed and a movable earth, right? So it's not moving. Um, how do I know that it's not moving? Well, if you go to Joshua 10, verses uh, uh, 12 through 13, then spoke Joshua to the Lord to the day of the Lord delivered up to the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said, in the sight of Israel, son, stand still. Thou art uh, upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Ajan. And the sun stood still and, and the moon stayed until the people have avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and has not go down about a whole day. It also said that that that's the only time that that happened. If you keep reading, right? So mm-hmm. now we have another witness, Habakkuk three eleven. We need two witnesses in the Bible, right? Habakkuk three eleven says the sun and moon stood still in their habitation at the light of thine arrows, and they went at the shining of thy glittering spear. Habakkuk three eleven is talking about this as well. Also, the book of Jasher talks about the same exact thing. If you read that, so we have the sun and moon stopping. And two geographical locations, which is is what the Bible says there. All right, guys. So that is definitely interesting. And also, if you go to um, Isaiah, it, it says that um, this is Isaiah thirty eight seven through eight. It says, and this is the sign for you from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing which He had spoken. Behold, I will bring the su- the shadow on the sundial which has gone down with the sun. But gone down doesn't mean gone down in the Bible. It means to go away from. Right with the sun on the sundial, it has ten degrees backwards. So the sundial returned ten degrees on the dial, which it had not gone down or go away from. Um, how do I know that it's talking about going away, coming forth, and going away? Well, if you go to Ecclesiastes one five, go there. It says the sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose. Click on sun arises. It's uh going to be h two 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 four, and it, and it says to rise. But the next sentence says to come forth, right? To come forth. So that means that the sun is coming to you. And then when you when you talk about it going down, it says to uh, to come or to go. It's to go. It's going away from you, right? So we have mm-hmm. that. So now, uh, so now we have uh, the sun and the moon moving, and we have a fixed and stationary Earth. We have a firmament, which is a solid dome, and waters above so far. Okay, so. Um, we have that. Any questions on that so far, brother? No, I just say I, I do find it interesting again, like that it's isn't it funny? Isn't it kind of crazy how the Bible says these things very clearly once you notice them and people, will, you know, people, well, Christians will deny them. So like the, the devil, what the devil's got going on is he gets you to deny the very first parts of the Bible, the very, very chapter one. You're already questioning what the did God really say that? Yes. And then also when you go outside, you can't even trust your own senses that. It's the sun and the moon that are moving. We're not moving. And it's, I forgot who had said this, but so what we're told is that the world spins so fast, but it's kind of like being in a moving car, right? Like we're in this contained car. So you don't really know how fast you're going. 
Okay, so if you believe that God stopped the sun and the moon, but it was just an allegory because he really just stopped the earth from spinning, what would happen if the earth was spinning at around a thousand miles an hour at the equator and he made the earth just stop still? Yeah. Wouldn't that be a violent wouldn't that be a violent episode? That would be versus ver, versus stopping the sun and the moon. Yeah. Because we're not moving. But if we were moving a thousand miles an hour, yeah. So if you if, if you're if you're in a car that's going two hundred <laughs> yeah. and it stopped on a dime, what would happen to the people in the car? We're we're actually traveling, yes, but we'll fly off the earth and and dude, that's just one of the movements. It would have to stop mm-hmm. orbiting at 66,600 miles an hour as well and also stop chasing the sun at 520,000 right, right. mi- 50, yeah, 550, miles an hour. So all those movements would stop and the moon is supposed to be <laughs> orbiting us at 2,200 miles an hour as well. So the moon would stop. And yeah, uh, if, if you like science and everybody's into that, uh, Neil Tyson deGrasse Tyson, actually Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about it and says that everybody would fly off the earth if you're not seatbelted into the earth. So science says that, but God, He stopped the sun and the moon. That's why it says that. So I, I, I love that take, bro. That very good point, dude. Very good point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, guys, understand that the moon is a light, the sun is a light. It says the greater light to rule the day, lesser light to rule the night. And it does say, like he said, bro, exactly what you said. Let them be for signs, for seasons, for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, not light upon the galaxies, light upon right. the earth. So it's they're close and they're meant for us because God made yes. us a special Amen. place and we are special. All this stuff is meant. The moon and the stars are at night so that you're walking in the forest. You, you're able to your know, eyes adjust. You could see a little better, right? Uh, they're meant for lights for us. And if it's a full moon, you can even see it even better. Now, the sun is here for us. Okay. We are a special creation from God. We are not some infinite uh, water ball floating in space. Okay. This is a special creation for us because God is great. This is what it's meant for to understand that this is for us and God. We need a relationship with God, man. Um, so we have. Yeah. You know, I was, I, I've actually talked about this recently and it's kind of funny because it's like, when you just read the text, Genesis 1.14, and you understand it. Okay, so if you think about it, so the, the things that are described in there, you have signs, you have days, days, years, and seasons. And so if you really think about it, like, and this is how, like I said, you know, this stuff is obviously intelligent design. And this is, and this is because it only works in a flat realm because this, like, the sky is a clock. That's what he's saying. He's saying that the time is established by these things in the firmament. So you can know what time of day it is by where the sun is in relation to the day. Right. So if it's, if it's in the middle, it's like midday. Right. And then when it goes down, you're you're approaching night, it's morning when it's over here. And then, so when you think about like the, the month, the months, the moons, so what the moon is when it's waxing and waning, you know, what time of month it is. Yes. You know, when the month is over and when the month starts, and then you understand the seasons based on, again, where the constellations are. So like that is why. And of course, that's funny when you actually see like like the Stonehenge monuments and different kinds of astronomical like loca- geographic locations around the world where, hey, on the solstice, this sun does this. And it's like, yeah, I know that those are typically involved sun worshipers, but at the same time, they needed those kind of markers so they would know when... The, the solstices were the equinoxes are in order to know when when was and we need- and so that all those things are based on the idea that that god put a clock in the firmament for us to see and to know the times for the you know for the feasts there the festivals go. and all the things that he said to do I was exactly and it would not work if we were spinning every which way all around an infinite universe it would it, it, it'd be nonsensical but this is obviously these things you can rely on them every day of the year. And even funny as we, as as yesterday was that that solar eclipse, that actually even somebody said if if you actually chart all the eclipses, you can get a good idea when the next one will be because they are it again you have this, this astronomical clock above yes. us, and it's it's not random. It's very it's very consistent because that a creator who took very good care of us made it consistent yes and understand if you're in a heliocentric model and the firmament is solid and the firmament is like outside of the galaxies 
which I mean, if I biblically it's not going to work, but people try to say the firmament's outside the galaxies and uh, God's throne is above that. Well, it's an ever expanding universe. So what they're doing is they're actually bringing you further and further and further and yeah. further away from God's Very throne. Impersonal. Very impersonal. Very impersonal. But the way that we're talking, the way the Bible speaks, it speaks in languages like that. It's that he's actually close. And I'm going to, I'm going to prove that to you guys here. Um, so we talked about Rakia. We talked about the firmament. Now, a very interesting verse that we need to understand about the firmament, okay? So the firmament is a solid dome uh, like, like we talked about. Um, and now Werner von Braun, he put this, uh, this verse on his tombstone. <laughs> but you got to go deeper into the verse. And I think that uh, I've, I've heard you go into this a little deeper. And, and I'm going to go try to even go into even deeper. So it says uh, on, his, on his tombstone, Werner von Braun. Uh, you guys look up him if you want to. I don't have for time because I don't have time to explain him. But he was a you know the director of NASA basically. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, came from Operation Paperclip. So Psalms nineteen one says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth His handiwork. If you look up that word handiwork, it actually means uh, God's achievement. Okay, God's achievement. Okay, that is actually something that God created His handiwork, and it's something that we should be like. It says the heavens, the heavens is heavens is the first heaven is where the moon, sun and the stars are located. The second heaven would be the firmament. The third heaven is where God's throne is. So he's saying that these right. heavens, these two heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Right. So we have that now it says. Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, I want to stick on that point for just a second, because it was funny if I, I it's funny, a lot of people who are not Christians who will actually say this, the. Uh, the fact that there is a dome, if you guys like that term or not, it does actually point to a creator. And so I think that it kind of, I never really thought about it like that, that like when it's specifically calling out the firmament, because it's like, because yeah, the, I think people, if you could obviously think the Truman show or whatever, the, there's that show, uh, what is it inside the dome or something? If you, if you could walk up and put your hand on it, you would be like, wow, this is obviously not normal. <laughs> Somebody had to put this here. Yeah. It's this is not a random thing. This is actually somebody put this contained system in this place the way it is. And it does it does point to a creator. And I never really thought about it like that. But yeah, uh, one other verse I wanted to bring up that I don't know if you if you're going to hit or not was this is the ESV version. But this is Psalm or this is Job 37, 18. Can you like him spread out the skies hard as a cast metal mirror? Yes. And I think it's like I think it might be molten molten mirror yeah. in the um in the in the KJV, but it's like molten glass. Yeah, that's it says molten people, glass yeah, people, in the KJV, bro. Molten yeah, glass. Yeah, so when you so when you think about like that description, and then some people say, "What's a firmament?" Well, maybe it's the atmosphere. It's like it's as hard as a cast metal mirror. Yeah. It's or yeah, or it's <laughs> it's not it's it's hard. It's not it's not just gases. Yeah, and also uh, so. Also, what I was going to say before we get back into Psalms 19.1, um, it also says that um, that the moon, sun, and the stars are in the firmament. So if it's the atmosphere, that doesn't work. The atmosphere would have to stretch out to the outer universe, right? Because the right. moon, sun, and the stars, all those are in the firmament. So there's that. Also, let's go to Psalms. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that what Warner Von Braun did is he left us a little breadcrumb. Because if you continue reading yeah. Psalms 19.1, it actually says this, 19.1 through 6. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor mm -hmm. language with their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them, he, the Lord God, or Most High, set a tabernacle for the sun. Understand what tabernacle means. Okay, tabernacle, it means tent. If you look deeper, it means the sacred tent of God or the sacred tent of Jehovah is what the uh, the Strong's Concordance says. So what are we talking about? What tent? Well, the tent that they're talking about is the firmament, man. That is what he's saying right there. He sent a tent because you know what? If you look at Andrew Hoy's work, that gentleman's a uh, mechanical engineer and he put together the tabernacle and uh, what, using every single part that's in the Bible, most people have to take away or add parts and it becomes like a regular tent like that we would know about now. But if you look, mm. if you add, if Andrew Hoy made it exactly the way the Bible said, and he, and it, he said it's shaped like a dome, right? So the tabernacle, he believes, and his, his, his real deep research says that it was shaped like a dome. So the tabernacle that they're talking about here, the tent 
is going to be the tent of Jehovah or the tabernacle for the sun is what it's saying right there, right? So we have that. And it says, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man running a race. When you run a race, you start at one point and you end at another, right? So it's talking about the sun mm -hmm. moving in the sky. It says, his going forth is from the end of heaven, not heavens. It says heaven. The reason why is because the first heaven is here. So the sun is going to the ends of this heaven. The second heaven is the firmament. The third heaven is God's throne. So it's actually moving in the sky. This verse is telling you that the sun is moving right here. And it says, and nothing is hid from the heat thereof. All right. So understand that. So it gets really deep as you break down the Hebrew and you and you look at the strong concordance. It's really interesting, man. Yeah. You know, it also, it, it, I, I believe this also is talking about the Maserat. Yeah. Again, so like that, if you think about when it's saying like tents and tabernacles and the sun goes. And so how you basically know when you're, where the, like what time of the season it is, the sun goes down. And then if you look up, you see the stars that are right there. That is your, that's your sign for what, what time of year it is. So I think that again, like people, obviously they, they get so resistant when you talk about the Zodiac or the Maserat because they think they're taught that all that satanic, but God put those fixed stars in the sky for signs. And so when David is saying that these things, was it day to day, night to night, pours out speech and knowledge that everybody can hear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like without words. So that that I think that they all point to God. I think that if you, I, I picked up a good book uh, last year called The Mystery of Maserat, and it shows that all the basic the the constellations point to the story of Jesus. Yeah, and you know our our our, our redemption. You know, from sin to redemption, and it's pretty amazing. And it makes it only makes sense that. If you really think about it like that, there's a certain amount of stars that obviously fall with, with the dragon, but then there's ones who obviously are doing what they're supposed to because they're not moving. They're not wandering stars. They're exactly where God put them to be in order to tell the story of his son and our and, and his conquering of, of death in the grave and, and evil and our redemption. It's pretty awesome. Amen, man. And then if you were God and you don't want anybody to go to heaven, uh, uh, Physical, what would you do? Well, you'd put an impenetrable barrier between you and the physical uh, beings, right? So what happens is mm -hmm. this is there so that none of us, because you know what we try to do, Tower of Babel, we try to go up there and take over God so that we can, you know, start creating Nephilim again like the Tower of Babel was. Now, I, you guys got to understand that's an impenetrable dome placed over the earth so that they that you physically could never be able to get through to get to heaven. Until you become spirit. When you're spirit, you can go into the earth, which is where Sheol is located, or you can get brought up to heaven. Spirit can, mm -hmm. not physical. Mm -hmm. That's what's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So we have that. And uh, like you mentioned in Job 37, 18, strong as a molten looking get glass, right? Understand that. Isaiah 14, the famous verse that everyone talks about, about Satan saying that I will, I will. It says, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So what is he talking about here? Well, the stars of God are below the firmament. And if he wants to go into heaven, he goes through the firmament up to heaven where God's throne is located. It says, uh, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the Mount of Congregation on the farthest sides of the north. Very interesting. Is God's throne above the, uh, you know, the North Pole? Maybe. Maybe. Right, it says that it's the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights have, of the clouds. Have, have you looked into the idea that um, that I, I saw this documentary a while back, and it was like that it was showing that that the Earth is actually there's more lands beyond like whatever the realm we're in, and then the Polaris actually might be where I think Polaris would probably be the center of the realm, whether it's the center of the world or not yeah. that we that we know exists then maybe that's where God's throne is above that. Because I think they were saying like the Polaris is in a certain spot, but magnetic North is a little, it changes depending on, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what would cause those changes, but it does. Yeah. And, I think so. Have you, have, what, what is your thoughts on? Yeah. The idea that there's, there's more land. Well, you hit, you just said uh, that exactly uh, when I was going to bring up Amos nine, six. So this is a perfect time to bring up yeah. Amos nine, six. Okay. So this verse in the NASB version, 2020, it says, the one who builds his upper chambers in the heavens 
as and has founded his vaulted dome over the earth, right? So vaulted dome, if you look up that word, it actually means binding heaven to the earth. So the vaulted dome binds heaven to the earth, right? So earth mm. and the dome do connect. Uh, I do believe that. Um, now, does it connect to Antarctica? I don't know. Um, the extra land thing that people say, I don't know where the firmament connects because the Bible does not say. So there could right, be extra right. land. Now, we need to understand mm. that when you when you talk about Admiral Byrd and all that stuff, it's like that's that, that gentleman's a, a high-level mason, first of all. And yeah, we're mm-hmm. taking information from a high level Admiral Mason, which we normally wouldn't take as conspiracy theorists, but there could be extra land. I believe he found the vaulted dome, uh, and that's why he switched it from a vaulted dome to a hollow earth. And that basically took everybody's path from thinking it was flat and to thinking it was a sphere and hollow. That's what his journal said. So if you if you think mm-hmm. about it, his his brother was actually a senator, and his brother, as soon as uh, he uh, Admiral Byrd passed away, what did he do? They made the Antarctic Treaty, and he pushed it to Senate, and they actually made it. And he was the one, one of the forefront, his brother, uh, pushing the Antarctic Treaty because he doesn't want anybody yeah, coming out strange. there. Very, very sus. And finding what <laughs> the vaulted dome, anyways, or uh, possibly, possibly yeah, well, I think speculation. I, I, well, I think that it's it's an interesting concept because obviously the <clears throat> Bible does not say like how big the earth is actually it, it, it kind of right. it kind of implies it's really it's really really big like we probably wouldn't know it all but i do think it's interesting like that if you think okay so the sun and the moon and the stars travel on a circuit and we don't know where they end i think that i think that that to us would be our wherever we're in inha- we can inhabit yeah. where the sun <clears throat> goes on its circuit but i guess it's it is possible that there is land past that that the sun is not on that circuit so like as far as we're concerned that would be outer space. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like if there's a, if there's a place that the sun does not go, it would be dark. It would be extraterrestrial because it'd be extra terrain. Yeah. And I have, I've, I've actually just wondered that, that what it, it's interesting when you see the arcs of the rockets that don't go straight up, you know, everyone says it's like the Disney, <laughs> the Disney kind of like the arc of a rocket. Yes. Like the Disney logo. Like what if, what if the whole NASA thing, besides just being a psyop, are they going to, are they trying to explore extra terrain that's not obviously in outer space? It's the outer space is literally outside of where our sun travels. Very, very interesting. Because it is because it is local. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And 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 I know that God only it it, it talks about God uh creating one sun, right? So and, and one or one moon. I don't hear anything. And then firmament, it's is definitely not plural. So the firmament would definitely have to be covering wherever they're talking about for the extra land. But yeah, oh yeah, very... yeah, for, for sure. I think that it, we just, like I said, we don't know how high yeah. it goes. We don't know how how big it is. I guess it's just very, it's very just interesting to think about because bro, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. Operation uh, Paper, or not Paper Clips. Uh, Operation Dominique. Right, we got to understand that Do- Dominique Chama is what the actual op- the full operation was. Dominique in Latin means belonging to the Lord. Chama means fixed shell. Uh, if you look at what that was, it's called Operation Fishbowl was the smaller. And they were taking rockets and trying to shoot it up to hit the firmament, right? So, and that, and, and it was exploding uh, at hemisphere to hemisphere or whatever, right? Uh, and you were seeing that the, the explosions. And what I would tell you guys is not only were they trying to maybe blow a hole in the firmament, which, which that makes sense when it says Operation Fishbowl because there's a hole and then there's a fishbowl, right? But also, if you're going to like have America over here and Russia over here, they need to find out how, how high they would be able to put the nuke to not hit the firmament or waste the nuke. So they need to find out how high the firmament is. So when they shoot this rocket over here and it goes over here, they want to make sure they know exactly so, how high so it is. So what year were they doing that? Uh, yeah, because I, I don't I, I've heard I've heard about Operation Fishbowl many times. I have not researched it. What are the details behind it? Um, Operation Fishbowl? I have it here somewhere. Where's it at? Um because a lot of people talk about that, yeah. That, I mean, obviously, just based on the name, it does sound like it involves a solid hard glass yes. <laughs> at some point um, in fishbowl. Hold on, let's see. Where is my notes on that? I know I had it somewhere. Kind of uh, what I wanted to do was add some stuff to. Uh... Oh, I don't know why. Okay, let me see. I I know I have it here. Uh, fishbowl. Okay, there we go. Uh, it was in 1962. So in 1958, you have Admiral Byrd going to find out about the dome in Antarctica, in Antarctica, I think. 
And then in 1962 is when they did Operation Fishbowl, a series of high-altitude nuclear tests in 1962 that were carried out by the United States as a part of a larger Operation Dominic Chama, right? So that's when it happened. And and, uh, basically that same exact time, you have uh, Operation uh, Deep Freeze and Operation High Jump from Admiral Byrd. And then all of a sudden in the 62, you have Operation Fishbowl, and then you have uh, NASA and all that stuff formed, and and you have NASA trying to do their thing, you know? So that's all in that same section of time when uh, they were trying to find out uh, if they could send these rockets to space and supposedly trying to get to the moon. Uh, I think a lot of these uh, esoteric people know the truth and uh, all that, you know? That's what I believe. Yeah, it's a very it's the timing of all the things do seem like there's some correlation between the the progression from yeah the exploring the Arctic to this then to obviously them going to the moon yes short, shortly thereafter it seems it seems all a little strange <laughs> yes for sure um, and also putting out all the propaganda they were putting out at that time so now also I said that that God's throne is above the firmament how do I know that you know am I just saying that no. If you go to the Bible, you actually have um, Ezekiel 10 or 126 says, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of the appearance of a man above upon it. So Ezekiel 126 says that God's throne is above the firmament. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. Amos 9, 6 says it is he who walks in his upper chambers and he places vaulted dome over the earth. Isaiah 66 1 says that uh, his, uh, his heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Why is that? Right. Because he's actually sitting on top of the earth. I mean, on top of the firmament, right? So that's why they say that. Mm-hmm. Um, Isaiah 40 22 as well. Uh, you guys got to understand that verse. That is a verse that everybody says. This points to the sphere. Uh, let's, let's find out what the verse says. Isaiah 40 21 through 22. Have you not known? Have you not heard? It is. Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who is the most high who sits above the circle of the earth. How does he sit above the circle of the earth? Well, he's actually above the firmament and he's sitting upon the circle of the earth, right? So circle is, is if you looked at the Mercator map, you're going to see Antarctica being a circle and look at this vaulted Mm. dome connects to the earth. So, and God's throne is above that. So that's how he's sitting upon the circle of the earth. It says, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Let's go back to that tent I talked about earlier. It talks about the firmament being a sacred tent of God or sacred tent of Jehovah. He places a tent over the earth. All of the uh, tents back then, the nomads, they were all shaped like a dome, and so was the tabernacle, right. I think. So, well, it's also so it's it is kind of crazy when people actually. I mean, it's like that's how that they try to use the circle as as a as a sphere, and it's like we we all know that that those are not the same. It contradicts I mean, it right away. Yeah, it's like because, you don't understand that. That's that's the funny thing when people say like, "Well, I can." People can circumnavigate the globe, and it's like, well, if it's a circle, you can, you can, you can still go around there. You can't. But that's the funny thing when people say, well, you, but they don't circ- circumnavigate going from north to south. They don't go around this way. They only go like basically around like the equator ways. And it's like, yeah, so you could sail around the whole thing. Yeah, if the boat was on but the it, water right here, it could go around and be right here. That's it. Yeah. It's not going around yeah, the earth, but it's going around the continents and ending up over here. Very easy, man. And also yeah, circles and spheres are similar, but they're not the same. Also, <laughs> he would have to be sitting on the circle of the galaxies or the cosmos because it's saying that he's sitting upon the circle of the earth, which means he is close, you know, not far mm-hmm. away. And that and that's why it says in Isaiah 66, 1, that thus the Lord heaven is the, my throne and the earth is my footstool. Because he's talking about heaven and the earth. Uh, there's also verses that talk about the, the earth shaking and it's shaking the heavens as well. Uh, why does God have to create a new heaven and a new earth in Revelation? Because earth and heaven are created, are created, are connected by what we call, a, or what the Bible calls a firmament. 
So that's mm-hmm. why he has to create a new heaven and a new earth because they're actually connected. Think about that, you know? So, uh, so we have that. And then, uh, also the, there's waters above, uh, the firmament in, in, uh, even after the flood. Cause I know people talk about the flood and say, yeah, oh. that people, that's, that's what a lot of people say that when the, when the windows of heaven opened up, that flood came and then there was no, but that's there, the waters above are gone. Then. Yes. Let's talk about that. But, real yeah, quick. Should, um, hmm. okay. So let's talk about the flood real quick. Three separate events happened during the flood. It says the the fountains of the great deep were broken up and water came from below. So if if uh, if let's say Noah's uh, uh, ark was right here and water came from below, that would raise his ark up a little bit. It says that the windows of heaven were open, which would be the firmament. Waters come from above and come in. They start filling the fishbowl, and then it says that the that it rained for forty days and forty nights. So it kept him pretty safe because water came from below first. So that way it, it basically raised up his ark and then water came when he, the windows of heaven were open. Now, people don't understand that if you keep reading, it says that the, it says that the fountains of the great deep were closed and that the windows of heaven were stopped. Now, if you, if you look at that word, it, it actually in the, in the Hebrew means closed. So the windows of heaven were closed and it stopped raining for 40 days and 40 nights. So that does, that means that if it was closed, that if it was a canopy, like they said, uh, and that canopy theory doesn't make sense anyway, because the moon, sun, and the stars are in the firmament. So that canopy would have to be outside the whole entire galaxy. That wouldn't make sense at all. But it was actually closed. So the firmament stayed intact, and you could read the Bible and find out that that's exactly what it is. It's in, and also in David, uh, and the Psalms actually talks about this. He says that, Praise ye him. This is a, a Psalms 148.1. I think you went over this verse uh, on, on one of your shows you did. Praise ye the mm-hmm, Lord. Yeah, praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all the angels. Praise him all his hosts. Praise him the sun, moon. Praise him all the stars of light. Praise him the heavens of heavens and the waters are ye waters that be above the heavens. What? Water was still above the heavens coming from David, yeah. the king of Israel. Close to God, mm-hmm. super close to God, prophet, right? Prophet. Yeah. So understand that, guys. So that that all the theories they're trying to come out with to try to fit science into the Bible, it's not fitting. Okay. Just go with what the Bible says and just filter science through it, like we're saying. Um, I think another interesting thing, bro, is when uh in the book of Daniel, it talks about uh, you know, an angel uh uh, basically trying to come down to speak to Daniel and to answer a prayer. It took 21 days to get back. And uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff going on where the moon, sun, and the stars are located that we don't understand. Ephesians 6, mm-hmm. 12 talks about the, the, um, the principalities of evil being in high places. I think that they yeah. are in this realm here, right? Where the, the first heaven, mm-hmm. where the moon, sun, and the stars are located. That's why you see people worshiping the stars. That's why you see people, uh, the Bible talking about the stars being angels. That's why you talk, that's why it says it takes 21 days for, for that, for the angel to get from heaven to the earth. It says that Michael, the archangel had to help him out, right? Had to help the angel out because he was mm-hmm. fighting the prince of Persia, which is like a fallen angel that was, uh, over, yeah. over the prince of Persia. And- over Persia. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. You know, what's interesting is somebody brought up in my comment section. Okay, so I I've talked about this before that. So in the Wisdom of Solomon, which again is an apocryphal book, and I don't know how reliable it is, but it, there's a lot of things I think that you can be you can learn from it. And at one point, so Solomon is talking to all these demons, and at one point he starts talking to Beelzebul, the prince of demons. And so in in the book of Solomon, it said, or the Wisdom of Solomon, it, it mentions that Beelzebul is connected with venus i forgot i think it's like hermetitus or something like that i can't remember like the greek word for but that he is connected with venus and so beelzebul is the prince of demons he's basically like the head the head one and he basically said and he basically said he was a powerful angel yeah okay so if you really think about this now here's where it gets this stuff gets really deceptive is is that there's very clear correlations between the principalities and the stars i mean the bible calls the angels stars at times so if you know anything about basically, if you have a telescope, if you walked outside and you looked, just looked up in the sky during at night, so obviously typically the brightest thing would be the moon, but the brightest star in the sky is Venus. Mm-hmm. And so when you think about like that, that whole old nursery rhyme, starlight, star bright, the first star I see tonight, wish I may, wish I might. And so he's, you, you're wishing upon a star and just think about the Disney thing, wishing upon a star. Isn't it crazy to think, 
the, the first star you would typically see probably would be Venus. Yeah. And so you'd be wishing on basically the prince of demons. Yes. That's it's it. Like how, yeah. how, how wild is that? Cause I thought about it as like, yeah, so there's all this, and that's kind of like where the divine female, you know, the divine female energy comes from is Venus, Aphrodite. And it's in the same, in the same way, it's connected to like Lucifer, the morning star, the, like the day star, the, and the day, you know, the, NASA, the, the, the light bringer. NASA, all their, if you look up their missions, they're all giving homage to Greek and Roman gods. Absolutely. And they're actually mm-hmm. calling them, not the name of Mars, they do call it Saturn, but they they actually call it the name that Roman Rome would call that God, and and it's it's really not paying homage to God of the Bible in any way ever. They're always paying homage to Greek, Roman sun gods, uh, planets, all this stuff, right? And if you look at the well, Bible, even you know there's there's a there's a there's a mission I forgot what it is. It has something to do with an, an, uh, an asteroid, and it's called Osiris Rex. Have you yeah, heard of that one? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I don't, people don't understand what Rex means. Rex means king. Mm. And so it's basic saying they have a mission called like King Osiris. Yeah. And it's just like, so Osiris is basically you kind of your antichrist character. Yeah. He's like that. He's like, he's in their pagan mythologies. He's the dying and resurrecting king, you know? So he's basically their version of Jesus or, or, and they're calling Osiris the king. Or like Simiramis. I mean, you're like, Simiramis, but, um, but just like, uh, uh, Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. Who is it like uh, the the one that created the Tower of Babel? I don't know why. But Nimrod. Oh yeah, so Nimrod. It's like, yeah, it's so, like the yeah, Nimrod, so you, basically. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, basically. So, so I think that the Tower of Babel, and I think that's why that you always have this this divine pantheon of gods. It's, it's like this kind of unholy trinity. <clears throat> it's because of the Tower of Babel. So I think I believe that this emanates from Semiramis was the wife of Nimrod. Yeah, there you go. And then so after Nimrod died. She pl- claimed she had some divine conception with like Tammuz, right? <laughs> his dead his dead phallus in order to to basically him re- being reincarnated as his son Tammuz. Same story as, so as then, Osiris. Same exact. Well, that's story, what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so, so you have so you have Osiris. So in to the Egyptians, you had Osiris, you had Isis, and you had Horus. Horus. Yeah. yeah. So then you have when the other ones you have. So it's all these versions of that. Yeah. And that's it's it, that story is, it continues to be retold, and. But yeah, so they flat out say this this mission's called King Osiris. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and I, jo- I joked in my uh, I joked on my one, one of my last videos. I said, "You ever notice how they don't name any missions after the Apostle Paul or Moses?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, j- just say, just saying. It's, and NASA, isn't it strange? <laughs> if you look up the word uh, "beguiled" in, in in the Bible, okay, this is all you got to do is go to Genesis three fifteen, click "beguiled," and you'll see the Strong's Concordance. It says N A S A. Okay, so NASA. All right, guys. So people don't say National Aeronautic Space Agency ever. I never hear anybody say that. They always say NASA. So understand that that word beguiled is NASA or NASA is the way it's uh, actually pronounced. Understand that. Mm-hmm. And then look up all of their missions. Look up what the what the missile was called that tried to explode the firmament in Operation Fishbowl. It's called Thor. Thor missile. And then oh, there's really? also different yeah. names of different gods throughout that they used. Okay, so... You understand, guys, this is like Thor's hammer trying to break the the fixed shell belonging to the wow. Lord. My gosh. Well, dude. even even so even so even the rockets they were sending up into the eclipse supposedly were were named Uphip, A P E P, and that's named after an Egyptian yes, serpent. I saw name. that, bro. And you're like, and that's what I said. I was like, okay, yeah. So the idea that yeah, NASA is like like they're trying really hard to make these acronyms work, aren't they? Because it's like is that really natural? Was it? It was called um, atmospheric perturbations of <laughs> yeah, the eclipse I know, path. I know, I know. Seriously, so like, so that's what you named it after. And I was like, that's what I said. It sounds more like that this serpent deity was associated with eclipses because it supposedly swallowed the sun. Is it more likely that you chose up from that reason, yeah. or it just worked out that way? Oh yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I know, bro. And the military. <laughs> yeah. I was in the military. They they do acronyms like that all the time, and they mean something. Okay, so also. In uh, Revelation, okay, so we got to understand. I got to finish this up. I got five minutes. So st- the stars are going to fall from heaven, okay? It says that the uh, that the stars are going to fall from heaven. Also in Mark, G- Jesus says that the stars are going to fall from heaven in the end times. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Jesus cannot lie. Um, it also says that the, the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. So the heaven is going to be 
you know, if you look up uh, Genesis 1 8, it, God called the firmament heaven. So the heaven, the firmament's going to open like a scroll. And then who's going to come in? Jesus is going to come in like a cloud. And every eye will see. You guys understand it says that every eye, which. Well, isn't it, isn't it funny to think about that if. If stars were to fall based on the way the science says they are, and you see like, you ever see the diagrams where you see the sun is this big, the earth is this big. Yes. And then these other stars, like what is like, is like Betelgeuse yeah. or whatever. It's <laughs> They're all bigger than, way how, bigger than the sun. How, yeah. Supposedly. So what happens if that, what happens if that falls to earth? Yeah. We got bigger problems to worry about than, than the mark of the beast, yeah. right? Everyone's like the yeah, mark exactly. of the beast. Well, dude, stars are going to fall from heaven. That's crazy. So. Yeah, yeah, would, yeah, if they all fell at the same time, that would be uh, problematic for the earth. <laughs> yeah, dude. And we're worried about who's the Antichrist. Is it Trump? Is it Biden? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, it's so funny, bro. Okay, this is going to be the end of the podcast. Okay, I'm, I'm, I finally made it to the end, guys. And uh, uh, it's basically understand that it says in 2 Thessalonians 2.11, and for this God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. It talks about like even if – if it were possible, the elect being deceived. There's a whole bunch of verses about deception. Jesus talks about it like, don't be deceived, don't be deceived, right? So they give us a blueprint, the Holy Bible to follow. Um, and that the cult and the enemy gives you a blueprint for you to follow for them. You can only worship mm -hmm. one master, love God and hate the other. Okay, so understand that if God has given you this cosmology, then the other is given by whom? the devil, the other master. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's look and find out all the six, six, sixes that are involved in the heliocentric model of, uh, given. Oh, okay. Yeah. We have a bunch and this is not Josh Monday sitting here, like beautiful mind. This is funny. This I think stuff. this was like, was Qu Quentin Rampage Jackson. It's funny. I joked with the fittest flat earther. I said, can you, can you, are you still going to be able to call yourself that when Quentin <laughs> Rampage Jackson comes out as a flat earther? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, I think he said, this is why he said that he finally, basically got off the heliocentric thing. You yes. Go ahead. So every one mile is eight inches squared. That's the curvature calculator. If you look up eight, or you take eight divided by 12, it's 0.66 of a foot. Every one mile is 0.66 of a foot of curvature. Every 10 miles is 66.6. .6, and every 100 miles, it's going to be 6,666 feet of curvature. We're also orbiting the sun at 66,600 miles an hour. 666 there. The Earth's circumference is 600 times 6 times 6 nautical miles. Um, we're actually at a 23.4 degree axis. If you subtract that from 90 degrees, you get 66.6 .6 degrees. Uh, Isaac Newton came up with the, the theory of gravity, started writing it in 1666. The force of gravity on Earth <laughs> is 666 newtons. The speed of sound is equal to 666 knots. The diameter of the moon is 6 times 6 times 60. The distance to the moon is 6 times 6 times 666. The, the Arctic and Antarctic celestial sphere is 66.6 .6 degree north latitude, 66.6 .6 degree south latitude. The surface and temperature of Uranus, not my anus, is negative 6 times 6 <laughs> times 6 degrees. Okay, that is just barely scratching the surface. There's even more, but, but for time constraint, I'm just going to go over those. So everybody know Genesis 1 verses 1 through 4. It says, thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. God is done on the seventh day and he rested. Understand that, okay? Uh, that is all I have, bro, because I have to go to work. <laughs> but thank you very much, <laughs> well, bro. Very nice to meet you, brother. Well, nice to meet you, brother. Before you go, hey, tell people where they can find you. Okay, me. so my, my podcast is Josh Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast. It's on uh, all the audio. You can look it up that way. And if you want to look up my YouTube, it's Josh Monday Music and Podcast. Uh, if you guys could, go to uh, JT's Spotify right now and go give him a five-star review. Go to his Apple, give him a five-star review, and also subscribe to his channel if, you, if, this, if you're new to listening to this. I appreciate that, brother. Appreciate that, man. Obviously, it was awesome having you. God bless you, man. Get to work. Get, get, get do what you got to do, man. <laughs> All right, and we'll, we'll try to set up for uh, uh, next Monday. You said, just give me the date. Send me the date uh, via Instagram, and I'll set you up on my show. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So I'm going on Josh Monday's podcast next next week. So uh, hopefully, you guys will hear for that soon too. All right. God bless so. you, brother. Love you, bro. Yeah. God bless you, man. Good talking to you, man.